Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you. Let's pray. Now listen, we are going to make that demand that the Lord said we should demand every day. Are you ready? Listen, I'm telling you first so you get your heart. It's not just a prayer we pray. It's a vo we release our voice to activate something. That's why you don't pray this prayer in your mind. Speak out. Praise God. Yeah, speak out. Out. Now I'll tell you something, every angel around you listening to this message now knows that I'm telling you to do this. And if you do this, because the Lord commanded it, if you do this, all the angels around you knows that activation time has just happened. And so they will go get the things you need for this day, praise God. Yeah, so are you ready? Make this declaration with me, say, Father, I demand today my daily bread from heaven. I receive it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. That's it. And, and watch the angels bring stuff to you today. I'm telling you, you will see a miracle today. And as you experience those miracles, I want to hear from you. Praise God. Because I'm excited to hear what God is doing. Thank you, Lord Jesus. As your word is brought forth right now, Holy Spirit, we depend on you completely. Remove every body. Thank you, Lord. Every yoke in anyone's life is being destroyed right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, thank you, Lord Jesus. Pain, pain is removed from your body right now. If you feel any pain in your body before now, you can actually begin to check yourself and you realize that the pain is gone. Yeah, check yourself. I, I see someone being healed around the shoulder area. Praise God. That the shoulder area, the healing has taken place already. You can begin to twist your hand and you will see that the pain is gone. The, 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 the socket is free now, praise God. You can begin to just check it, it's gone. You are free, praise God. Everything that is called a burden, I command it to live your life now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. We're in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, 1 and 2. Now verse 2 says, and be not conformed to this world. Why is he telling you to not, not to be conformed to this world? Because he has told us in verse 1, present your bodies as a living sacrifice unto God. Now when you do that, you don't release your mind to flow in the direction that the world is flowing. Why? Because I told you yesterday, there are rulers of the darkness of this age. There are rulers behind the darkness called poverty. There are rulers behind the darkness called death. There are rulers behind the darkness called sicknesses and diseases. There are rulers. And what are they doing? They want to, they want to gain mastery. They want to, they want to be called Lord. Now you see, when, 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 when scripture says, as I live, every knee will bow to me and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. What do you think he's talking about? Why did he say every knee must bow and every tongue must confess to me? Why? You see, because there are other stupid powers and rulers of the darkness who claim lordship. And they claim lordship over your life because they make you confess them as lord. So you fear them. You fear death. Someone comes and says, look, tomorrow you are going to die. Hey, hey, you begin to shake. You begin to shake. You don't realize that. I don't get death. How will death come? It will take the spirit of death to rule over me before it can capture me. And I, hey, the spirit of death cannot rule over me because I rule over it. I was telling you yesterday that the Lord will begin to guide your tongue. He will begin to guide your words. He will begin to guide your mannerism, guide your character. You see? Now that's what Jesus meant when he said to Peter and the other disciples, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. I will teach you how to unlock all these benefits that belong to you. So the Lord began to tell me stuff about death. He said, don't ever pray death on someone. Don't ever, never get to that place where you're provoked and you pray that someone should die. No, don't. 
don't. You, you remember in scripture, in, in the book of Ezekiel, when God was speaking to the prophet, and he says, look, when I say to the sinner, you shall surely die. He said, the reason I'm saying this to the sinner is that you will go warn the sinner from me. Why are you going to warn, warn the sinner? Because it's not my desire for him to die. So go warn him. If he would change from that his wicked way, then he would leave. If he refuses to change, then of course death will take hold of him. But then his blood, you are free from his blood. So you see, and God never said something like, when I said to the righteous that he will surely die. Now that tells you that death comes because of sin. You say, what are you talking about? Yeah, death comes because of sin. The Bible said the sting of death is sin. He said, what are you trying to say? Yeah, death is a spirit. It hovers and it's looking for who to grab. And what it uses to trap people down is what is called its sting. The sting that death uses, according to scriptures, I'm not making this up. It says it is sin. Mm. Now it says the strength of that sting is the law. So, When you get to that place where you come face to face with death, you know the first thing that tries to stand against you? Condemnation. Now why, why do you think condemnation? Because of all everything you know about the law. Because you stand before face to face with death and all you can think about is, ah, what wrong have I done? Oh, has my life been clean? Hey, today the end has come. How I wish. That's all you begin to think about. I remember many, many years ago, I, I, I got injured and my friend took me to the hospital. Back there I was in school. That was in my 100 level in school. So my friend took me to the, to the school clinic and the, the nurse on duty saw the wound and said, wow, they have to give me an injection. And then they gave me a certain injection that time. And then after they gave me the injection, my whole, immediately after I took the injection, I was still standing in the injection room. You understand? And suddenly, my whole head started going in circles. I, was, I started hearing sounds, you know, so loud that I began to ask, something is, who's hitting some metals together? <laughs> you know? And then, like, uh, my friend was looking at me as in, uh, what I said. I said, I'm hearing metals. I'm hearing someone beat metals. Who's doing that? You know? And then suddenly, my eyes began to go dim. Everything. I, 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 said, I said, nurse, <clears throat> something is not right here. And then she asked me, have you taken this injection before? I said, I don't know. I've never, I've never had this experience before. And I said, oh, please, please, you need to lie down. She started running. Help us get that. My friend was scared. <laughs> and, and then I was lying there suddenly, like I was moving in the clouds. <laughs> and then my friend was like, what's going on? I, I just said to him, he says, hey, don't be afraid. I won't die. <laughs> I'm telling you, many years ago, I said, don't be afraid. I won't die. I said it so calmly. And I was just, I was there wondering what was going on. I couldn't see what's before me again. Everything I could see was clouds. I'm telling you the truth. This is a personal experience. But I kept saying to him, I said, don't worry, nothing will happen to me. Don't worry, I won't die. I kept talking like that. I won't die. No, I won't die. Until everything began to clear out. Before even the doctor would come or anything, everything began to clear out. The sound, everything just disappeared. Praise God. Why? Now, I didn't let sin, I didn't let condemnation come near me. I was just confident in the Lord. He won't let me die. No, this is not how I'm going to die. Death can't have power over me. I'm telling you what the truth is of these things. The sting of death is sin. So it looks for sin. It looks for disobedience to use against you. And when it finds it, it strikes. 
let me tell you something. When we talk about sin, we're not just talking about, oh, physical sins, like, you know, the fornication, adultery, lying, all those kind of things. As simple as your disobedience to what the Lord is commanding you to do, it is them that sin. And then it strikes. And then when it strikes, what do you do? Because when it strikes, it puts condemnation on the other side. I'm telling you how death operates. This is how death takes people away. When it strikes, it puts condemnation on the other side. You don't know what's going through the heart of the man on the dying bed. You don't know what's going through his heart. He, he begins to go, Father, can you just forgive me? I'm so sorry. Because in his mind, he is thinking the end has come. So I better make my way right with God. What about walking in righteousness at that time? Not for yourself, but in what Jesus has said and done concerning your life. You know at that point, hey, but Jesus came to give us life. That we should live it in abundance. I receive life from the Lord Jesus Christ. Death has no power over my life. How about we think like that? Think like that until it consumes your whole being hear me this is possible this is possible. what about what about it's not about who it's not about what has happened I'm telling you what Jesus said didn't he say he's the resurrection and the life didn't he say the one who believes in him will not die what death was he talking about thank you Lord Jesus so he says the same thing with poverty he says renew your mind Renew your mind. Don't let your mind be subject to these rulers of the darkness of this age. Don't let your mind be subject to poverty. There are people, no matter how much they are blessed today, in their minds, they are still thinking, hmm, one day all this thing is going to go away. One day all this thing is going to go away. Soon they begin to talk it. Someone say, ah, you just bought a new car. Say, eh, eh, I better drive it while it lasts though. I better enjoy the money while it lasts. What are you talking about? You see, because there is a ruler of the darkness, the ruler of poverty is trying to get you to confess his way of thought or, or reasoning. And then soon you begin to confess that. And then your life begins to go down. Your life begins to go down. Suddenly you begin to lose stuff. And then you're wondering, but, but oh God, oh hey, you have been confessing it. You have submitted yourself to the ruler of the darkness of this age. Hey, renew your mind. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In your marriage, renew your mind. Everything about your life, renew your mind. Oh, all marriage have crisis. There is no marriage that doesn't have crisis. It's just that people have learned how to keep their crisis to themselves. Hey! Who said so? A ruler of the darkness behind divorce, behind broken homes. That ruler is coming after your marriage. And then you're joining them. See, that's how he starts. He begins to whisper things to you and whisper. Things. And they say, yes, mm, you know, a, a little thing that happens in your home. You begin to imagine, eh, even if, after all, I won't be the first person to divorce. After all, I won't be the first person to, to quarrel with my wife. After all, I won't be the first. Come on, who's, who's giving you all those words? That is where you fight the fight of faith. No, because you see, you have given up your, ah, you've submitted yourself as a living sacrifice. You are not the same with every other person. You are a different person right now. You are a peculiar treasure unto God. You know, God says, if you will do these things, then you will be a peculiar treasure unto me above all peoples. A peculiar treasure speaking like the rest of them that shouldn't be your life I'm going to have a sweet marriage I'm going to enjoy my family I'm going to have the best family why not because I'm too intelligent but I'm intelligent enough to listen to the most intelligent one that's all the intelligence you need in life I don't know. I wish I was, I was intelligent. Hey, the only intelligence you need in life is to listen to the most intelligent one. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, sometimes I wish I can just go on and go on. But listen, we'll still continue tomorrow. Praise God. Hey, I'll invite you for our fellowship meeting tomorrow by 6 p.m. The address is on your screen. Don't miss it if you're in the city of Abuja. This, this, this period I'm talking about marriage and why your marriage must work. So it's important you come. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.